I'm Adam from The Army Painter, and today in the studio, we're gonna show you how to paint bone armor. Now, over a decade ago, when we debuted the Color Primer Spray Range, something that we pioneered many, many years ago, we put together these simple painting guides. Check this one out. This one features Color Primer Skeleton Bone, which is a great way to paint up your armies and save loads of time with this two-in-one primer and base coat. We're gonna do something a little bit different in this tutorial. I wanna go for a, more of an ivory theme. We could use skeleton bone here and highlight up, but I'm actually going to start with color primer matte white. Let's take a look at the rest of the paints that we're gonna use in today's tutorial. We're gonna start off, of course, with color primer matte white. We're gonna use a glaze of skeleton bone in combination with war paints, mixing medium, brain matter beige, matte white, and light tone. Recently, somebody in the Hobby Brigade asked me how to use a glazing method. Now, we're gonna do a little bit of that here. Because we're going for an ivory tone for this armored model, we're going to take some of that skeleton bone, which I previously mentioned from our war paints range, and we're gonna mix it down with our war paints mixing medium to really thin it down. We're gonna apply this all over the model like a glaze, almost like an all over wash to the model. And what this will do, if we do it correctly, is it will just apply a slight tinge, a slight tint to the model, and that's really what we're going for. Before we do that, we're going to have to prime the model, shake that can very, very well. You wanna get those heavy pigments mixed in, and you're gonna spray at a distance of no further than 20 centimeters. When you're finished, turn the can upside down and spray until the pigment stops coming out of the nozzle. That's how you clean the nozzle for perfectly clean spraying and priming in future projects. We're gonna apply some of our War Paints Mixing Medium to our wet palette, and we're gonna mix in some of that skeleton bone to create our glaze. Glazing is a method that just tints the model, like I said previously. We're gonna apply this light bone tint so we can pull off a very clean ivory effect on this armor. Go ahead and make sure that those pigments are perfectly mixed in with that mixing medium, and you're gonna be ready to start glazing. You can see that the model is primed white, very, very bright white, and we're just going to apply this glaze of skeleton bone across the entirety of the model. I like to use a larger brush. I'm actually using a vehicle brush for this method because the larger bristles will hold more of that glaze and allow you to pull the glaze and coat the glaze across the model very cleanly and get good even coverage. The effect that we have here is very, very subtle. Don't worry, we are going to let this dry and apply a second coat once it has. So just go ahead and continue applying this across the entirety of the model. Make sure it doesn't pull too much into the recesses. This isn't a wash, this is a glaze. We want those pigments to sit on top of the model. Once we've allowed that first glaze to dry, we are going to apply our second coat now. And as you can see on screen, once you begin applying that second coat, the effect really starts to show through, really getting that bony ivory effect with that skeleton bone glaze over top of our matte white color primer spray. You're just gonna work this glaze all over the entirety of the model. You want very smooth, even coverage of that skeleton bone glaze across the entire model. If it does begin to pull a little bit, you can just wick it away and move it around with your brush. That War Paints Mixing Medium allows the glaze to be very, very workable. So just take your time, apply this all over, nice even coats, and once you've applied it, go ahead and just give it a once over to make sure it's not pooling or puddling too much in any areas of the model. You can see that the glaze does pull a little bit into the recesses, a little bit like a wash does, and that's fine, that's fine, but we are going to reinforce those details and that shading with a true wash in later steps. Glazing doesn't have to be difficult, it can be very simple. All you have to do is take some of that War Paints Mixing Medium, mix it in with your color and paint of choice, and apply it evenly across the entire model. Very, very simple stuff here. Now that we've allowed that second coat of our skeleton bone glaze to dry, we're mixing in some quick shade wash mixing medium with quick shade light tone. This is going to thin and dilute our wash just a bit because if we applied the light tone right out of the bottle, it might just be a little too drastic for this very light ivory bonish armor. Just go ahead and mix your quick shade light tone with your wash mixing medium. 
Instead of using a larger brush and applying an all overwash with our quick shade light tone, we're gonna be using a smaller brush. This time, I believe I'm using a character brush and I'm just going to focus and trace this into the recesses of the model. This is going to really up the contrast on this very bright bony armor. In some areas like here on the face mask, we are gonna apply an all overwash, that's fine. But in the broader areas with the broader panels, we will wanna be more focused and careful with our wash. As you can see here on the shoulder pads, on just the lower areas, I'm going to trace that light tone into the recesses and then drag it a bit up towards the top and upper portions of the plate to give it the effect that the shadow is getting deeper the further down the armor as we go. I really like to use quick shade light tone when painting bone and ivory colored armor because it has a slight orange, almost yellowy hue to it and makes that ivory bone effect appear really realistic. So just carefully wash this light tone into the lower and bottom most recesses of the model. You can see once that we begin applying this wash to the model, the depth and contrast of the model really begins to take shape. Now, if you were going for a grayer white armor or a grayer bone armor, you could give this a wash with uh, some, maybe some dark tone mixed with a little bit of light tone and really thin it down and you'll give it a much grayer, almost white appearance. Once the wash has had time to dry, we're going to begin applying our first highlight. You can see that I blocked in some of the details on the model to give it a more finished look while we finish off the highlighting portion of this tutorial. I'm taking Brain Matter Beige here and I'm applying my first highlight. I like to call it a chunky highlight. You can be a little bit loose with this because we are gonna refine that highlight in the next step of this tutorial. We're gonna find all of the edges of this model and we're just gonna trace in all of this Brain Matter Beige to bring out those details. Finally, we are adding some matte white to our wet palette. We really wanna thin this down White can be a little bit chalky due to the nature of the pigment. So you really thin this down with water when you're applying it. Our white does cover very strongly, so don't be afraid to thin this because when you thin the paint, it gives you ultimate control. As you can see, I have just very little paint on the brush. This is gonna give me ultimate control when applying this final extreme highlight. This time, we're gonna try and paint this matte white inside the brain matter beige, inside that chunky highlight that we initially applied. And we're gonna find the most extreme angles on the model to apply this final highlight to. On areas like here on the shoulder pad, you can just take the edge of the brush and trace the edge along the side. This is highlighting on easy mode. So be sure to go around all of the model, find those highlights, pick out the most extreme highlights with your matte white this will be the final step in painting our bone, our ivory armor. So take your time here, be patient, and you're really going to appreciate the effects when you're finished. And don't forget the helmet because this is the first area on the model that somebody looks at. So you really wanna make sure that you pick out all of the details as cleanly and as best as you can. This next step is totally optional, but if you like to apply a little bit of weathering to your model, I have a very simple trick for you. Take some of that matte white, your most extreme highlight color, and apply a couple dots sporadically and randomly across the armor. You wanna apply some on the edges of the model, like right here on the shoulder pad, and then you might wanna add one somewhere in the center of that shoulder pad as well, like right here. We're gonna allow that to dry after we found the areas that we wanna apply this weathering to. Then we're gonna take a darker paint. You can use a dark brown or black. I'm using Necromancer Cloak here, and I'm just gonna paint this little chip mark inside of the matte white that we left behind. This is gonna give the effect that the paint has been scratched, chipped, and worn away. Chipping and weathering is really great when you're painting lighter colors of armor because it adds some visual interest and contrast to the model. And now our bone armor is complete. The glazing technique is a great way and used in combination with our color primer sprays to pull off some very simple and interesting effects when you're painting up your bone armor.
Remember to keep those paints thin, especially when you're painting these lighter colors, because it's gonna give you supreme control when applying your highlights to the model. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I enjoyed painting up this model for you. Remember, you could find all of the paints that were used in this tutorial at your friendly local game store, online from your favorite retailers like Amazon, and from us directly at www.thearmypainter.com. Remember, the magic in miniature painting is that it can be as simple or as challenging as you'd like it to be, but with the right techniques, you're sure to achieve some great results. We'll see you next time. <laughs>